You can title this page in your notes, Organ Systems. And we'll start off by introducing you to a couple of terms. The first is anatomy. And the second is physiology. And I want you to think about what you think the difference is in those terms. Why could we not call this class just anatomy or just physiology as we go through this introductory page? Over on this side, let's review a little bit about how organisms are organized. An organism, such as a human, so you've got one organism, is typically divided up into a bunch of organ systems. Many traditional anatomy books will divide it up into 11 organ systems. And those are the 11 that I'll show you on this page. Each organ system is made up of usually several organs. So like the urinary system is composed of the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder, and the urethra. And then each organ is composed of a variety of different kinds of tissues. And you'll learn that there are four major kinds of tissues, and each of those can be subdivided up. And then each tissue is made up, of course, of many hundreds or thousands of cells, which are the basic unit of structure and function in living things. All right, so now let's go ahead and take our first peek at the 11 organ systems we'll study in anatomy and physiology. I'm going to use a blue pen for this first one. The nervous system. I'm going to, right along with it, introduce you to another organ system, the endocrine system. I like to introduce these two at the same time because they both do the same thing. Communication amongst all the parts of the body. And both of them are pretty controlling. They get to tell different organs what to do. So you're going to write the same job for both of these. This one, the endocrine, does it via hormones that travel in your blood. And the nervous system by electrical signals that travel in your nerves. Next, let's take a look at the digestive system. I'm going to use a green highlighter and start in this guy's toothy mouth go all the way down. So this is your GI tract. Your esophagus is behind your trachea and it passes behind your heart and then through your diaphragm enters the stomach then the small intestine and I'm going to add on the large intestine here that kind of goes up and around and then down. This would be the colon and then out the sigmoid colon. Waste products would come. This is the digestive system. I'm writing it in green. And its jobs are to get the food in. We would call that ingesting it. Then it's got to break it down into the nutrients that make it up. Maybe amino acids, simple sugars, and fatty acids. Then once they're broken down in the small intestine, they're absorbed into the blood. And anything that can't be used by the body, like fiber, ends up getting pooped out. So 
so it gets excreted. So that is the digestive system. Now let's go over to the other side of the page and look at the respiratory system. I'm going to use pink for the respiratory system and I'm going to use a pink highlighter to show you how air comes in your nose. By the way, breathing in through your nose is always the smartest because it gives it time, the air time to be cleaned and to be humidified and to be warmed up. and then breathing out through your mouth. Supposedly the best way to do it, but definitely breathe in through your nose at least. So the respiratory system gets the oxygen in and the carbon dioxide out. Carbon dioxide makes your blood acidic, so you can't keep too much of it in your blood at any given time, so you have to breathe it out. So because of that, we can say that the respiratory system is very important in acid-base balance. If a patient has pneumonia, they're not getting rid of their carbon dioxide effectively and their blood could become acidic. Okay, we'll just move down just a little bit right here and look at the muscular system. I'm going to use a blue pen for this. Normally a muscle would cross a joint, so my picture's a little sloppy, but let's say here's a muscle in blue. The muscular system helps you move. If it's attached to bones, then those skeletal muscles help your skeleton move they're attached to a blood vessel or your GI tract that we were just talking about. We call them smooth muscles. When you look at them under a microscope, they don't have as many lines and hash marks on them. And then if they make your heart beat, there's only one place for that. That's the cardiac muscle. Well, while we're right here on your page, let's use a yellow highlighter and color in the urinary system. Can you guess why I made it yellow? P is yellow, right? When I was first teaching my three-year-old, Owen, he's seven now, about the urinary system, what he knew is the kidneys make PP. So we've got the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder that stores the urine, and then the urethra to get rid of it. So it's got to get rid of nitrogenous waste Those are byproducts of metabolism. So usually nitrogenous, meaning that they have a nitrogen in them. You got to get rid of that. It can be toxic in the body. The kidneys are also super important for balancing uh, your acid base balance, just like we talked about with the respiratory system. Kidneys are important in that too. They play a big role in water balance, which essentially ends up affecting blood pressure. And then electrolytes, like sodium, potassium, magnesium. Go down a little bit to his leg. And this is just a good enough spot to talk about the skin, which we use a fancy word in our class called the integument or the integumentary system. Your skin helps protect the underlying muscles and bones. So protection from damage and infection. It's your first line of defense against getting sick. Also, it has so many sensor endearing, endings for sense of touch it helps us interact with our physical environment. 
so that we know, do things feel soft or hard or cold or hot? And although my model doesn't have the reproductive system on it, because I didn't draw a uterus or a penis on this poor, poor, ugly drawing, we can still add the reproductive system here. So in a female, that would be the ovaries and the ut uterus, and in a male, it would be the testes. And it's got a pretty straightforward function, although it is complicated how it ends up working, but it makes more humans. Then I'm going to use an orange pen for this bone right here. We'll use this to talk about the skeletal system. support along with the skeletal muscles for movement and also calcium storage in the hard parts of the bone. So if you're not getting enough of that then you can end up with breaking your bones down. And something called hematopoiesis. That's when the bone marrow produces blood cells. And the cells over here got some pink ones coming from the bone marrow and they all go circulate then. And then some Pac-Man looking ones and then we'll add a few little fragments and let's see, can you think you can guess what all these are? The main components of your blood? So the pink ones are the red blood cells, we call those RBCs. The yellow ones are the white blood cells, they help fight infection. And these are little fragments are platelets that help with blood clotting. This is probably a good enough place to mention the immune system right here. So white blood cells are a big Big, play a big role in that in fighting infection and diseases like cancer in your body. And last but not least, maybe use a purple highlighter on the heart right here. And then a purple pen to describe the cardiovascular system. Its role is the transport of all those goodies, nutrients, gases, waste, and hormones. Oops, and you couldn't see that, could you? Okay, so that's our initial overview of these systems. We'll be working our way through these this quarter and next quarter too.